Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, uh, we're gonna try something new, something new in a few ways. If you've noticed here in April 2020, time of recording, if you crack open your Creative Cloud App Manager, there is a new little space on there. There is a, a new category for beta apps. So in this video, we're gonna explore the new After Effects beta here in 2020. We'll talk a little bit about the beta program in general, and I'll uh, take you on a little tour of the bits I'm most excited about working into my workflow. So let's uh, take some risks, let's download that beta, and uh, let's get into it. So to start with, if you want to install and, and work along with us here, you just have to go to that little beta app section and just go ahead and click install like you would with any other app. Now, if you don't see that little beta apps tab, don't worry. This is a feature that's getting rolled out randomly to Creative Cloud members. So it's still kind of early days for this stuff, but don't worry, they're gonna get around to folks. If you wanna learn more about the beta apps program from the Adobe website, I'm gonna to link to a blog post give you all the info on that. You'll have a few more prompts to go through, but once you load up, you'll notice there are just a couple little additions to the interface. Right up in the corner here, we've got these two little bits. One of them is for sending feedback, but right next to it, let's look at what these new features are. Right off the top, the first two that I'm really interested in are these tapered strokes. Uh, tapered strokes are something that we've really wanted to see in After Effects for a long time. Now they're here. And then the next one here is this concentric repeater. I love a good repeater. You know, the repeater is my friend. We have tutorials all about that but if you're really into making some nice retro repeatable graphics then this concentric repeater idea might be the thing for you it's like a variation of the offset for the rest of the stuff it's a lot of stability a lot of usability and it looks like min max is getting a little bit of a gpu treatment i think uh, talking about min max would be a tutorial for another day so let's start us off looking at the tapered stroke a tapered stroke is something we've asked for in after effects for a long time so i'm pretty excited that it's in here and it's come with a little bit of a bonus feature that i kind of didn't expect when you twirl in here, when you twirl into any shape layer, you're going to find contents and then a group, path information, and here's our stroke information. When we look at this thing, most of it is the same, except for these two new buddies down here, the taper and the wave. Let's stop looking at the wave for a minute, and we'll just look at the taper. So first we're looking at, we've got some rounded caps on the layer, but you might have butt caps. It doesn't really matter too much. But the taper here gives us these new variables to play with. And basically what we're doing is we can set a start and end taper on this line. If I hit reset here, they both come in at zero. So the length of the start taper is at 0%. And if we push that up to 100%, it's pushing that taper along the line. And you can really see that hard boundary right here where that is going. So you can push that all the way to the end if you like, make it a nice big wedge, or you can push it from the other side, push it from the end, you end up with a nice wedge that way, or you can push it from both ends, have a nice even taper on both sides. You just have to increase the stroke width because each side is taking a bite out of that width. Now, the other fun thing you can do is you can deal with the start and end width if you like. So by default, that's at zero, but you can beef that up, give you a nice thick kind of pen stroke. And then you can also play with the start and end ease. So what does that really look like? Let me just see if I can give you a good example. Let's set this here to say 50%. And now let's uh, go ahead and ease that. Let's ease that curve. And you can see the curve that's getting eased right there. So let's put that back down to zero. You can see how that's easing the curve. You can take this into a negative number if you want, which will ease it in a totally different way. It's totally up to you how you wanna handle that. But it's very similar to how Illustrator deals with these kind of tapers. The other feature that comes in here is something called the wave. So let me just reset that taper and let's look at the wave. The wave is gonna set some undulation going through here. So at zero, at the default zero, you know, nothing's happening. They start increasing, you can see you know, the outside here is becoming very wavy. Hmm. We have a phase control, so we can actually push the wave through this thing, which on a rounded end path, not so great right now. But if you increase the wavelength, that becomes a little bit less noticeable. And you get this nice globby, globby trail as this thing's going through, which I'm sure we'll find all kinds of uses for. This is a very nice contemporary thing. You could use this to create uh, flowing hair. You could use it to simulate some wind going through. Personally, the first thing that jumped to mind is we have to do a write on technique with that. So as you can see, when you apply a trim paths to a tapered stroke, it does have a nice kind of toothpaste out of the tube kind of look as you extrude this stuff out. 
what's really happening is that the length of the path is being shortened and that taper profile is being applied to that new shortened length. So that's why we end up with these fat globules that then seem to lengthen or smear and stretch out. So on these, we've got the taper on both sides. And then finally on this one here, on this nice little swirl of the, of the dot of the eye, we really just glorp, glorp that thing on. I mean, what's really fun here, what's really fun here is we can make use of that trim paths. And if you want to have like some drag going on with this, you might actually drag the start along. So it's much more like a smear as this thing goes. So then we end up with this nice kind of a shape as it goes along. And these are just some things to think about when you're working with the taper. So have fun and make some neat stuff with that. The other feature that I really like is the new concentric repeater. Now, right here, we've got a shape and I've just applied the regular repeater. You want to see tutorials about that? This channel's full of them. But if we wanted this repeater to not go in a line, but to be uh, making this thing kind of larger, like we're going down a tunnel or something, what we would do is we would adjust the repeater here and use its scale. So we could end up with this kind of a look coming off of the repeater. And we can, we can of course, offset this tunnel, wee -wee -wee, uh, you know, going in and out. And my apologies to anyone who's photosensitive. When we start getting into repeating elements like this, things can get fairly wacky. So just a heads up, we are going to be playing around with this some more. I'm just going to remove the repeater here, and we are instead going to go ahead and add the offset paths. Now, the offset paths, if you've already used it a lot, you know, you just increase the amount and, and the path is getting offset more. But now we have some copies we can play with. So if I put this up to say six copies, you'll notice that instead of the repeater where everything's getting scaled, we're really just offsetting it more times. And it's creating this kind of bullseye target kind of look. Now we can also offset the copies here. And as they collapse into the middle, they go away to nothing, which I think is really great. It's a very kind of linear relationship between all of the new repeated elements, which I think is very fun. Maybe down the line, we'll, uh, we'll get some features where we can have kind of easing between the copies. But for now, I think this is pretty interesting. Where we can increase the copies as we kind of go out in this circle. Something I want to show you though, is notice how as we're increasing the copies, when we're not at a whole number yet, it's writing on each copy. So that's something to think about and play with as you're making these kind of retro style graphics with this. The first thing of course that jumped into my mind is this kind of retro geometry uh, wipe that you might do. So again, apologies to anyone who, uh, who doesn't like you know, crazy psychedelic things like this. This is sort of one of the big functions you can do. This is literally just three copies of the same layer with the different colors. And then we're just animating that copy offset and it's it's expanding this thing out. So if you're doing some kind of, I don't know, retro Super Dave Osborne kind of situation, maybe this is what you're into. And of course, you can always just combine both of these elements together. So you end up with, you know, some wonderful, glorpy, strange stuff. The world is your oyster with this kind of thing. And hopefully, you know, you end up making things that are way better than these weird little experiments that I cooked up. But definitely download the thing, play around with it, and uh, enjoy these two new features. I'm sure in an afternoon, you'll have things that are way more interesting and engaging than what I've come up with here. So if you're watching this in the future, I'm sure the beta is full of all sorts of crazy stuff by now. And the features we're talking about are now so commonplace that this is laughable. Personally, I'm really excited for the chance to test things out to submit features and to have feedback into shaping the tool that I use uh, pretty much every day. Thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams channel. If you like learning about this kind of stuff, motion graphics, visual effects, after effects, that's what we talk about here. So maybe uh, subscribe to this channel. We get tutorials up here all the time and a live show on Fridays. So make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss that. If you end up making anything with the stuff we talk about here, please let me know. Send it at me on Twitter, tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams on both of those platforms, but that's it for me. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you around the internet.